light, sunlight, starlight, your light. Let me show you your light. This is a light stick, and it's activated only with human electric energy. Really, no plug, no socket, no buttons. But it does need our full electric human energy. Light on. This is your real inner light, lighting up your magical connections, especially between parent and child. But if you let go, the light goes out. I want to keep this light on in the magic of childhood. You know that magic, the light shining in your child's eyes, contagious smiles, giggles, wonder, and wisdom. I love that magic. I was a primary school teacher for 30 years, and I always loved my children, my parents, and my families. I also had a great appreciation, because I almost grew up with it as I was teaching, for technology and the wonders that it brought us. Technology has changed a bit today. For one thing, there are over 7 billion cell phones worldwide. Do you know globally that means there are, that more people have cell phones than toilets? But the real thing about the cell phones is that it has changed our way of life, our society, our culture, our families. And there is a new word out there, nomophobia, and it means addiction to your cell phone. You've seen it, faces buried in a device, fingers moving constantly, selfie, 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 and so much FOMO, that is fear of missing out, that they sleep with their cell phones, waking up all night to check in. 50% of teens admit they're addicted to their cell phones. And that's because with every swipe or tap, there is this dopamine hit to the limbic system our emotional brain, and it takes over, driving your child into a dopamine high, higher, higher, until they melt down, angry, impulsive, depressed. And you're left wondering, what are they thinking? Well, they're not thinking. The brain's prefrontal cortex the guide for thinking and thriving on a dopamine high, no connections, but plenty of anxiety, stress, attention deficit, compulsion, and sleeping disorder. And this is all further complicated by a second problem, cell phone radiation. It is a fact children absorb more than twice as much radiation as adults do, disrupting their soft, still growing tissues in the eyes, the brain, the gut, and the reproductive system. So let's think about your teenager, the cell phone in the pocket, the computer on the lap, damaging, disturbing sperm, ovaries, and future fertility. And the cell phone radiation particularly attacks our younger children through their softer, thinner skulls until it creates a firestorm of radiation in their brains. In 2012, pediatric neurologist Martha Herbert published her deep study with Harvard Medical and 
Massachusetts General Hospital, both prestigious institutions in Boston, Massachusetts, on the east coast of the United States. Her study was a collection of the vast global data supporting the dangers of cell phone radiation to our children, microwaving our children, and showing that the rise of cell phones matches the rise in childhood disorders same wave. And these childhood disorders are like attention deficit and autism. Addiction, radiation, what can we do? Well, remember the prefrontal cortex, the guide? Well, it's not fully developed until age 25. Right now, our children need guidance more than ever. When I was a teacher, a favorite book was Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. How the young pig Wilbur needed his champion Charlotte, the wise spider, and her radiant web of light. Parents, you are that light. You are that champion. So you go first. You be the role model, the guide. And children will follow your lead. Children will listen. Keep it simple. When you're with your children, put away the digital devices. Did you know that the original techies, the late Steve Jobs, and Bill Gates did not allow their children a digital device and sent them to the Waldorf schools where digital devices are not allowed ever. Today, that practice is still followed. And today, more and more parents are choosing to unplug. One family created a tuck-away box for the family cell phones, and they labeled it be present. And happily, the children can't wait to get their cell phone into that box first. And happily, it reignited family conversation. You remember conversation. And another happy occurrence, the idea went viral worldwide. So yes, saving the magic of childhood one family at a time. And in that same spirit, here are three practical things you can do right now. Number one, with your body. Keep the digital devices off every part of your body. Number two, communication. Try to use airplane mode when you're not using your phone. And text instead of talk, and when you're talking, use the speakerphone with the wired headset. Or better yet, you could try a wired landline if anyone knows what that is. And number three, in your home, remove the wireless as much as you can, but please especially remove those baby monitors wireless and the wireless snuggle toys, the wireless game consoles, and the wireless uh, toy robotics, TVs, DVRs, printers. Oh, and it's really helpful to turn off that router, that powerful router, every night. So you can just get wired. <laughs> so what I'd like to do now is take you from the practical back to the magical, into the light of our human to human connection that tells us, yes, be present with your child. Tune into your child's real inner light, not the fake light of the cell phone. And, and when you do that, you will be using what science calls 
imprinting. These are the deep impressions that go way back to the dawn of our human species. And the best part, you already own these three simple imprints. First, you looked into your newborn baby's eyes and your baby looked back through the windows of the soul. Number two, you touched your newborn and a shiver of pure knowing went through both of you. And third, you embraced your newborn in the full electric human connection. This is our real face time, connected, up close, and personal. So when your child presents a problem, go back to those three simple imprints. Go back to their babyhood. I mean, really, would you stand in your kitchen and yell down to your baby, I told you to change that diaper. How many times do I have to tell you? No, you would go up close and personal. And this works at any age, even a teen. There was a boy, 15, having a tough time in a brand new high school. His mother was chopping vegetables when she heard his voice. Mom, and she knew, be present. She put down the knife and turned. She looked into his eyes, gently touched his shoulder, and they embraced in the beautiful bond of parent and child, trusting, believing, loving him. And eventually came the return of his confidence, his focus, and his fun. I'm sure you have guessed already that that boy is my son. So you see, your baby is in your child at any age. Remember the light stick, the beautiful connection of human to human connection. Don't let go. We all are meant to connect. It takes two to seesaw, two to tickle, Two, to read out loud together. Two, to tango. And two, to fall in love. So fall in love with your child every day. It's something you get to do every day. You get to look. You get to touch. You get to embrace the magic of your child. So you go first. Be the role model, the guide, the champion, the light. Stephen Sondheim, the great Broadway composer, has the perfect lyrics for helping to save the magic of childhood. Careful the things you say, children will listen. Careful the things you do, children will see and learn. Guide them that step away, children will glisten. They look to you for which way to turn. Children will listen, light on.